Hey everybody, it's Electrish. Welcome to Static Realms Hangouts. I am here today with an awesome band. And they are called Triad. Let's take them out. Hey guys. Hey guys. Hi. Hey guys. How are you doing? Hi. Good. How are you? No, uh, not too bad. Not Great. too bad. Good, thank thank you. you for joining us on your evening over there in the UK. Oh, well, so thank you for having us. Yeah, of course. Happy to have you. So we were first introduced to your band. Um, by uh, the Night Ride FM guys. They sent us over a music video for mm -hmm. Planet Lost, which was amazing, by the way. So Thank I you. Listened Thank to some you. more, yeah, we listened to some more of your music and starting with the first video that I saw from you guys, which was on the road again. So it's like a video game that you yeah. guys are in. I loved that, but this music video is very different. So can you tell me more about um, the song Planet Lost and uh, you know your album that might be coming out and what you've been working yeah. on? Yeah, sure. So basically Planet Lost is our take on the topic of pollution. And you know, it's a very, you know, modern topic that never ceases to end until there is a solution. So we kind of wanted to sing this in a dystopian way. Dystopia has kind of been our um, main theme. Main theme, yeah, throughout our music, the one the one we're producing right now. And our idea was to speak as if there was this traveler from the future mm -hmm. that is trying to advise people that is if things continue to go as they are going, the planets mm -hmm. will in fact be lost. So it's kind of like this time traveler trying to speak to the present people. And that is the whole theme, the planet that is completely gone. We take our planet for granted. And, you know, we just expect that our life will continue as we know it. But if we don't take an effort against the problems of our planet, who knows what our future will be like. Yeah. That's what we wanted to depict and represent. So we got this, we got dystopia, and we created this story. And the video kind of is that, um, the our director's view of that story and yeah it was really a lot of fun very dark but that's how we like it so yeah, it's made by our dear friend uh the Gianmarco. yeah an italian yeah, director and, uh, yeah he's a really amazing director um about uh, Ricky's age but, yeah uh, yeah and he, just, he took great. the idea yeah he took the idea though he listened to it and we just said you know what work on it this is our idea. What do you see? And then you just produced this amazing video. We're really happy yeah. about it. Also, the it's an amazing video. video. Yeah. You guys really you definitely got the message across in the music video. And the song itself, although it's dark, I think it's very important that, you know, to see someone making that clear in a music video that the planet is sort of in that going in that direction definitely. if we don't pay yeah. attention. So I think it's a really awesome video that you guys did. And this is only your second music video, right? Yes, that is yeah. correct. Um, there is going to be, of course, uh, more coming with the singles. As you said, we were working. Our first idea was to work on our album because there are other songs, of course, as an AP. Um, we were going to call it Dystopia. But then we thought to maybe start releasing singles until we were done with this phase of the band, if you will. So you can consider it kind of like an album just released in singles mm -hmm. to then start working on a second phase. So all our songs have this kind of like darkish theme in its own way of this dystopia in some way. It could be personal, it could be, of course, the environment, it could be imagined, but that's, um, I think we get lots of inspiration from darker themes I would say rather than just singing about uh, happy colorful things which are beautiful but synth wave I think uh ties <laughs> we prefer Orwell to Rosa yeah we we prefer <laughs> George Orwell for sure and synth wave really <laughs> connects with you know the cyberpunk movement when then there's dark wave there's many things that kind of like uh, give you an opportunity to write in that sort of style so also, we take a lot of, we have a very uh, different influence among uh, one another, but we've always liked to infuse uh, specifically the 80s and 90s vibes and sounds together. And it's been really good. Um, Ricky has brought in a lot of, he's classically trained, and he's brought up a lot of new uh, chord progressions. Well, I prefer some of the raunchier sounds, and it's been really cool to blend that all together and make these sounds. 
it's a mixture of both. Yeah. Both are mixed triable. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I think that, like you said, in Synthwave, it's not always happy and palm trees and neon lights. You know, I think it's great that you guys have that very unique approach to your music and to your music videos. I think you guys def definitely stand out in the scene. It's not that traditional you know just like all keyboards all the time you know thank you thank you very much thank yeah. you we, we appreciate it and you are correct in saying that and um in many other ways that sometimes you can't actually see from a music video because you know from a music video you have the storyline of course you have some sort of animations rarely do you nowadays see the band playing so you don't not many people have the idea of what's happening behind the scenes right um because we all came our histories we all have played in you know regular bands if you yeah. will you know starting with rock and roll or with pop music whatnot we just put it all together uh discovered synthesizers ricky he's the main keys player so he yeah. already had the experience we're all singers mm -hmm. and we kind of just united and synthwave was kind of the language that put everything together so we really strive to get our experiences from past bands genres and put it in this genre in this um yeah. this way of expressing ourselves we are definitely lucky to have a lot of experience between the three of us and we're really close we all live together and i think it comes out in our music um we have, we're extremely satisfied with the results and we kind of felt it and even our closest colleagues back home in our native Sicily, uh, we played it to them, they felt, and there was a sort of movement that just, it felt right. And it resonated not only with ourselves, but even with our colleagues. And it was a very musical time when we wrote it, which was great. That's excellent, yeah. And you guys have been playing, so you've been performing together as well lately. Um, I've seen some yeah, of yeah. Your, your clips, yes, but, great. Um, how are you feeling um, after the pandemic situation, being out there again and performing together? Well, definitely the, many things have changed. Yeah. A, a good change is that people really want to go out and listen to music and have like entertainment for sure. So that's good. The only thing that kind of has to kick back, at least here in the UK and in other parts of Europe is the actual, you know, getting the gigs because people and especially, you know, places are not used to booking bands anymore i know it sounds simple but um things have changed some for for the better some for the worse but i'm sure that the artists who consider themselves artists and are really focused on their arts they survived through this <coughs> period that means they're in it for the long game so i think we're going to see exciting things after that it's definitely the case for us and i hope to you know hear more from other people as well yeah we're looking forward to Hearing more from you guys, seeing more from you guys, because I think you guys are truly, truly artists. And without further ado, I would love to show the music video for Planet Lost. Yeah, that's great.
Thank you. Thank you. The the acting too is really really well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Claudio Basile is the actor. Yeah, yeah really. Claudio from Sicily. We uh, our director found him and uh, really good interpretation. Again, he just got the message and really good acting. Because, like, we're um, going back to our like animal roots. If we don't, if you we got it. You got it. Continue the way that we live. Yeah. It's Thank like you. um. A devolution, you know, the, the opposite of an evolution, because you know, things have a beginning and things have an end, but many times they're cyclical, I believe. And an interesting thing that you pointed out before was, yeah, you know, this aesthetic of synth wave that many times is like colors, neon, which is it's incredible. Um in this video, the last video we did, we tried to use like 8-bit animation. Um, but we also think that synthwave has kind of like grown it's a it's a mature genre i think and many people are doing different things you have tone box you have perturbator you have uh, an incredible amount of artists even here in the uk they do amazing things and when it starts going away from the aesthetic you see how it matures how everyone sees that genre takes a color and does it his own way you can see that in the mainstream now nowadays as well. Um, we saw it with the weekend. We saw it with many other artists. Lady yeah. Guy, you can see that kind of mainstream pop now is going towards the eighties. And I think that synth wave and this what was once an underground culture certainly had an impact. And that is a beautiful thing because it it means the genre itself, the beginning genre, was really strong to begin with. You can see that. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And it's very interesting to see what will happen in the next few years with where artists go, where artists take their music. And, you know, going to a darker side of it, I think it's very interesting to see that side of an art, um, of music especially. I think that it, it has a lot to say. So I'm glad that you guys are doing that as well with some of your tracks. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank so you. What's coming up next? Do you have any singles coming up? Uh, soon or we do yeah we do have a single coming which is called feeling home and we're working we're starting to work on a video for that um the songs are ready they're ready to go we're just trying to understand what it, which is the better the best format to kind of let them go if they all should have a video or not but 
the it will, definitely will come out. Depends and, how we wake up in the morning. And <laughs> yeah, it kind of depends how we're gonna wake up in the morning. Decide this is the right. way. Yeah. Right. That's we're, awesome. We're planning on writing new material as well. We've been on creative planning and we have ideas, so that will be. And we're rehearsing as well. Yeah. yeah. In front of some new live sets. Yeah. The whole story. Us in the UK, we rented a house, so we all live together. Um, and what we did is we rented the house, so we transformed it in a studio, in a studio space with all our instruments, synthesizer, whatnot. And then, then we have the rooms upstairs. So we basically rock and roll barracks, rock and roll in a way, and <laughs> we just do music. That's fantastic. That's how, you know, I think a lot of great music is made. So please keep doing what you're doing because it's fantastic. We will. Thank, we will. thank you. And thank you so much for being on with us. I really appreciate you guys coming in. No, thank, thank you, you for That's having great. us. It's been really great. Awesome host, awesome program. So oh, we look forward so to much. seeing you again. Thank you very much. All right, so that was Triad from the UK. And up next, I'm going to be playing a music video from an artist that we will be featuring on our upcoming music festival called Synthomania. And his name is Night Razor. Night Razor is an awesome artist. If you guys haven't heard his music, you definitely need to check it out. And um, we're going to be showing the music video for his track, Recontrol.
right, so that was a great music video. And now it's my pleasure to bring out another band from the UK who are new to the synthwave scene. They are The Last Arcade. Hey guys. Hey, Hello. What's doing Hi. over there? We're all good. Being here. All good. Yeah, yeah. Having a good evening so far? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, really hot. We've got yeah. sun in the UK for once, so yeah. A bit of sunshine. It's good. Wow. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hot here too. I, I feel you. So um, enjoying the summer. You have this amazing single coming out called When We Were Young. And I think it's it's your first single. And it's very impressive because I remember the first time I heard it, it sounded very well produced. The, the vocals are great. And it sounds like you guys have been in this for a very long time. So can you tell me your background? Have you all um, been in different bands in the past? Yeah, we have, yeah. Um, yeah, forever, basically. <laughs> yeah, we've known each other for years, for a long, long time, but we've all come from different bands. Um, so, yeah, for me, I started um, in a band called BB Mac uh, 23 years ago. We had a bit of success in the, in the US, in the UK, uh, but I've always been writing with Paul, uh, and Paul introduced me to Steve many, many years ago. Um, so, yeah, that was my background. Number one in America. And number one, <laughs> number one America. Go on. <laughs> Pick yourself yeah. up, Steve. Ah, uh, that's fine, too. <laughs> Paul didn't. No, Paul I, didn't didn't. I definitely wasn't number one <laughs> in America. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so we, we've, we've known each other for years. We've been writing uh, as songwriters and in different bands and stuff. Uh, we were actually rival bands, me and Steve, years ago when we first started. Um, and then after BB Mac had finished the mic, band at the time 10 reasons uh steve joined 10 reasons as a singer yeah. um we wrote a couple of albums for that steve was the producer for that and writer for that with us as well so although we have all been in different bands we've always been in projects together yeah. um so yeah and then this felt like uh, a progression again this was yeah. like uh, steve's massively into the synth wave genre introduced us to it and we were like yes let's get involved yeah. in this let's have a go with this so yeah, so um, John Campbell, he has a radio show, and uh, he sent me over the track, and he's like, you got to hear this band. And yeah. I heard you guys, and I was just like so impressed by what you're doing, and it's fantastic, especially being new to the synthwave realm. I think you yeah. guys have a very, very strong track that's coming out. So today is the release date, yeah. and yeah. I think... It's you guys. I'm glad we got to talk to you now before you guys get huge and blow up. So <laughs> <laughs> thanks for being on. <laughs> oh, it's great. It's great. Yeah, John. John was the first person to play the song, wasn't he? Yeah. I mean, a big thank you to John. Um, I, I hit him just. It was lucky, really. As we started just putting the social media up, I just searched for synthwave radio, and he came up top. And I, 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 I apologise to him now because I didn't know who he was. <laughs> um, but I sent him a message and just said, um, "I see you do synthwave radio. We've got." A out, would you like to take a listen and he was straight back within 10 minutes um had a listen to the track and he's been so supportive ever since he's yeah. just he's jumped on board he's spoke to obviously you for us for us he's spoken to other people um so big massive thanks to john because having someone like him in your corner yeah, yeah. Just, you know. and speaking of john um he has a radio edit of a michael oakley uh track and we're going to be playing that later on during the same show and i'm going to be speaking with michael oakley so i think you know for being relatively new artists in the synth wave scene you guys are definitely starting strong and i think you're you're definitely encompassing the synth wave sound very very nicely so i think i can't wait to hear the next one <laughs> yeah <laughs> the rest of the album's terrible but a one hit one there no 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 just i <laughs> doubt that <laughs> It's great. It's um, the sound. The, the, it's all coming from. It's all Steve's baby. We, we're all we're all like, we all love songwriting. We're all big fans of writing songs. But uh, the synthwave sound is something that we always talked about in the studio. Something we always talked about maybe doing one day. But we were always sidetracked by other projects. projects. So um, you know, during COVID, we. You know the studio we had a lot of downtime so we were bouncing ideas around and we said maybe this is the time to yeah i think so we a lot of genres that we've that we've got involved with as songwriters in the past so you know we wrote dance songs we wrote country songs we wrote yeah. pop songs and some some genres we just haven't enjoyed or we found hard or you know um just haven't been us and this felt weird because straight away it, the song just gelled together it, yeah. it came 
together really quickly. And uh, we've 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 got like virtually a full album that yeah, most of it, most of it, you know the yeah, most, the al- of most right. of the albums written. So just a bit more production, and you guys can hear it a lot more. Hopefully, that's very exciting. Yeah, and you even did a little uh, acoustic version of the track, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, together. And I I think that was a really cool thing too to hear, and it really shows that you guys have so much talent between the three of you. So it's that's awesome. Yeah, it's that's nice it. for, for for me. Any song should be able to be stripped back always. You know, that just gives you the basis of the song, the melody and everything simple. And that's basically how we write it. most of our songs. It'll be a guitar. That was actually written on a guitar, that one. But, you know, it'll be piano, guitar, yeah. and we'll just, you know, bounce together in the studio. So I think it's nice, to, as you say, to show people that, you know, the song... Uh, it works. It, used to be. it, it works, yeah. it, it's the, it, at, at the heart of it, it's a good song sort of thing. It's the song and then the production adds to it and, and gives it its sparkle, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it's it's amazing. So thank you so much for uh, you know being on the show, and I can't wait to show the music video for when we were young, which is out today. Yeah, no worries. Well, thanks yeah. for having us on your show. Yeah, this, is, this is a world premiere. Yeah, yeah. first and last. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome back. You're welcome back. So here is the last arcades when we were young lyric video.
that was a great video. And now it's my pleasure to be speaking with two artists in the synthwave scene that I absolutely adore. I have Michael Oakley and Dana Jean Phoenix in with me. Hi. Hey, hey. like Hi. Chris. <laughs> Thank you both for being here. Really appreciate it. Thank you so happy much for having here. us. Yeah, so happy to be here. Yeah. Yeah. So we are here today to talk to both of you about your collaboration on Michael's new album, Odyssey. We're gonna show the album cover, there it is. So what an album this is. Michael, I love this album. It's, it's really, it's a different sound for you, I think, mm -hmm. but it's still kind of true to your production value, your wonderful vocals. And then of course with Dana's vocals, on the Glasgow song, it's amazing. So I hear a little bit of the, you know, I still hear 80s kind of like reminiscent of things I love, like sort of like a George Michael tone and maybe a Phil Collins tone, but then it's more sort of a 90s sound for you. I yeah. Think. And yeah, I love definitely. That. Yeah, absolutely. So no, it's, it's funny. Uh, George Michael's a good one because I love George. George is like one of my absolute heroes and, uh, when I was in the sort of pre-production, kind of thinking, you know, what kind of direction that I was going to go in with this album, his Listen Without Prejudice album was was the kind of placeholder because that album has a very sort of ethereal sort of quality to it. And I thought, I really want to try and capture some of that across this whole album. Um, and then stuff like Phil Collins, Sting, Peter Gabriel, I just... I wanted to make something that was, it sounded like a singer songwriter, sort of in the 80s, kind of early 90s sort of album, if you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, it's kind of funny how it turned out in the end. <laughs> I never know until the end. Yeah, and it's it's really, really strong. I think each track is sort of its own story, and I love that. Yeah. Um, one is more of like a sexy sound, and then one is more of a forlorn sound, and then you have, you know, your definitely your ballad sort of, you know, like traditional way of singing. I, I love it. Uh, it's a it's a tapas menu of different <laughs> different <laughs> yes. stuff you, for you to pick and choose from. Nice variety, <laughs> very nice. Oh, and we, I feel like I have to talk about the fact that there is, you know, the bagpipes. Mm amazing they sound so amazing i never thought i would like get chills from hearing you know like a bagpipe sort of sound i yeah. remember getting chills when i heard that for the first time michael you you told me that there were going to be bagpipes on glasgow <laughs> <laughs> and i was like yo that's next level uh, it's, um, it's, it's next funny level. though because a lot most of most people that when i sort of mentioned it they were like uh I don't know. I just, I'd need to hear it. I, you know, I just, uh, uh, maybe, I just, I don't know. It sounds like it could be a little funky. <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, oh, no, how, how, because I had the idea. I thought, Do you know what? That's the instrument to put in that song because I'm Scottish. The song is about where I come from. It's, it's, um, it's about, you know, loving where you come from and, being very proud of where you come from, but also the frustration sometimes at how, you know, when you live in the same place all your life, it, you know, you can sort of maybe see the small mentality of where you come from and you want to be something more than that. So you have to leave. But then when you leave, you develop this sort of real sort of like patriotic pride, I guess, of, of, mm -hmm. of, a, of a, you, you, you rediscover the love of where you come from. So the song is about how home is where the heart is. It always is. And, uh, and I thought, right, if I'm going to do this, I need to find the right person. So I actually found someone in Scotland, uh, a guy called Lorne McDougall. What a Scottish name. And uh, it's more, more Scottish than me. <laughs> and I said to him, I said, look, I want this to sound kind of more like, um, you know, emotional. I don't want it to sound like a, like a tourist advert for Scotland. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, so we kind of came up with this idea of, uh, uh, he, he layered up the bagpipe 
about 14 times with different takes mm -hmm. and he had different types of pipes and and he, he basically talked me through how to sort of like mix it together and I was like all right okay so when I put them all together it formed this like huge sort of like bagpipe band sound but it was still just too like in your face and I was like right I need to figure out how to sort of how do I get this to feel a little bit over the hills and far away but not as if I'm apologizing for putting it in there. Do you know what I mean? Because that's the problem. So yeah, I managed to find the right balance, thankfully. And uh, and everybody that was sort of like, even Ollie Ride, you know, because I always I'll work with him. Even, even he said to me, he's like, you know what? You did good with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I was like really impressed by it. I was like, this, am I like dancing to the back? <laughs> it's a one-time deal never again <laughs> well, what only, have... only michael oakley can make that happen yeah. <laughs> that's true oh, yeah and uh i think you know the whole album just from start to finish it's just brilliant so well done thank you no i'm very proud of it very proud and, of it and the two of you your vocals just completely sound wonderful together i love the vocals um in your track together and the video is really, really nice. It's got that sort of cinematic appeal to it as well. Mm. So, yeah, we're going to be showing we're going to be showing the music video later on. But let's go ahead and show the music video first for "Is There Anybody Out There," which is one of my favorite tracks on the album as well.
Yeah! <laughs> woo, woo, woo. Great, great video. And you had your, your sparkly bling jacket on. Love that. The colors oh, really you know nice. what? That, that, that was a jacket that I bought at somewhere towards the end of last year, and it literally took about three months to get here. I was just like... Wow. <laughs> I was already like, you know, when you buy something online and it's like, right, I'll just, maybe I'll just get the large. The worth the large is too big. But then if you get the medium, then what if the medium is too small? <laughs> yeah. You can't make a medium bigger, but you can make a large smaller. This is true. This is but true. anyway, it came through and I was like, ah, oh, that's cool. So it sat in my wardrobe. I'm like mm. a bit of a magpie. If I see something I like, I sort of just grab it and it sits in my sort of what I call my Michael Oakley wardrobe and then one day I'll be like oh yeah remember that mm. <laughs> and then, yeah, I'll wear that today for my shoot yeah that looks good yeah oh, what, a, what a great video Brad Brad and you work so well together um definitely. the colors are so vibrant and Brad's just such a pro and the thing I really appreciate appreciate about you too is you guys are like on the same wavelength like you have all this talk like in your own language um i know from experience like just talking excitedly about plans for glasgow song um, yeah you guys just seem to have you're on the same wavelength it's really interesting to watch you guys bounce yeah each other. you know it's, it's funny because brad's one of those people that i just like hit it off with him immediately when mm. um when I when I first met him, I don't know if it's because like you know, like with myself and you, how we've hit it off. It's like I, I have the, like, and I'm kind of funny with star signs and stuff, and like I'm Capricorn and you're Aquarius, so we're mm -hmm. we're star sign sisters. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and the same with Aquarius. Brad. It's kind of like he's yeah. Aquarius as well, and I'm like, right. well, maybe, maybe that's maybe why. But but um, you know, I remember like the, from right from the get go when I first met Brad, when we did the like, I remember I met him. He came round to James's house in Los Angeles. It came round like within an hour after James phoned them. And we just like hit it off like that. And uh, he was like, well, I should make a video with you. And he said, you know, how much have you got with you? And like, I, and I, all I had was like my spending money that I brought. And I've got, I've got 150 bucks or something. And he's like, ah, just give me it. <laughs> and, then, and then he came back and we were literally making the video for California at like two, three o'clock in the morning. Like, because I was already suffering a crazy jet lag. And uh, and so, like, you know, that way when you, you have that horrible lack of sleep and your hours are all off and you start to get that kind of sickness where you're like, I need mm. to sleep right now or I'm going <laughs> to fucking kill someone. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So I was literally, I went to bed at six in the afternoon, six, at six o'clock at night in order to, because I was aware we were doing this thing later. And I remember like he tapped on the window. Like, I was so out of it with the jet lag and the kind of trying to catch up with the hours because Scotland is eight hours ahead. So I went back. So it was like wh whatever was six o'clock at night was like two o'clock in the morning for me. <laughs> <laughs> not good and I'm a, I like my beauty sleep <laughs> so anyway you know we just have always had this crazy sort of like we all I, I always say this you know me and Brad actually we procrastinate actually quite a lot because we have such a laugh but we we somehow just always get it done and we've mm -hmm. somehow just always like I remember one time as well when we were doing the introspect stuff we had written a whole like concept for a video like planned out we had scene by scene and um, we were arranging for props i had bought stuff for props and then when he came around that we both looked at it and we're like do you know what let's just let's just forget this let's let's not bother let's just do something else <laughs> we spent months working on this treatment <laughs> Wow. Well, you guys work so well together and it's it shows in the work that you've done. Even if you did scrap some things, I think mm. what you've done is it's really impressive. It's awesome. Well, even when we did the video, the video with you, Dana, it was funny because we, we did the Is There Anybody Out There video on the Sunday in Toronto. Mm. And then I like when we drove home, like my brain was like exhausted. You know that way sometimes you're not physically exhausted, but your brain is like, mm. oh. yeah. Uh, uh, and you're just like, I need to go to bed. I can't think. And yeah. um, I woke up the next day and, and literally we just were like, right, we're going to meet Dana in an hour. 
<laughs> right, we better, we better hurry up. <laughs> and we just literally, we just rocked up with just a sort of him and his camera, a sense of what we wanted the video to look like. We knew we wanted it to be a black and white video. We wanted it to be melancholic. Um, we wanted it to kind of have a bit of a feel of that Don Henley Boys of Summer video. And the same mm -hmm. director also did a video for Sting called Russians, that song. And that, that was the two references that we had. And so when we when we arrived and we picked you up um, and we drove and we literally were like, it was raining and it was like there was snow like, and it was just it was like. Pale. Oh, it was a nasty oh, day. Because yeah. we thought we walked across that bridge at first, and then that was I was like, yeah. "We're not. This is not happening. No, we are not. No. Doing, let's go. We'll just chance it and see if we can go into that cafe." And luckily, mm -hmm. when we went in the cafe, for some reason in that area, uh, we we managed to get in because it had opened up, and yeah. we went downstairs. I mean, the wait the waitress wasn't very happy with us. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we did order food and and some beers to. Uh... <laughs> Well, we all, but uh, yeah, because Brad was putting his like gear on one of the tables. I, right. like, I need to clean that table now. Yeah, oh. there was this really kind of tiny window where yeah. you know, bars and cafes were open for this brief moment in time. And you know, had we waited like a week or two after that, like they would have been shut down again. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you know, our timing was was just right. Um, I, the funniest bit though was like when when we we're standing there, obviously like singing along to the track and then there's the waitress walking in the background and you can see her in the, remember one of the takes and she just she didn't care she was like i don't right. care what you're doing yeah. just clean the table and we're just like yeah yeah just vibing <laughs> just like, vibing. Like, like, the performance doesn't keep stop no keep going keep going it doesn't stop yeah. the show must yeah. go on yeah totally <laughs> that's great it was a fun wow. day. It was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, Brad is such a such a cool guy too. So it's like always a good hangout. The vibe is really chill. I love mm. working with Michael because Michael is such a pro. You are such a pro, Michael. But you also have such a laid back, cool, fun vibe about you. And that, I feel, helps to bring out the best performance in, in other people. Because they yeah. feel relaxed. And yet yeah. you know that you're there to produce something great and meaningful. Um, and something that will affect people. So it's kind of that absolutely. perfect balance. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's a funny thing with Brad. You know, Brad, he's just got this eye for detail. Mm. You know, like I wouldn't have thought about the mirror in mm -hmm. that picture. Like he, that was his idea. He was like, get you to stand there. I was so and, spur of the and, moment. Yeah. And it, and it was yeah. just like, how can you see that? Do you, like, how can that, like, just how did he see that shot in his mind and think, that would work really, really well. And then obviously in the video, um, it kind of when I'm singing, it's kind of on me and you're in the black the background, but then it goes out of focus when you start singing and then it goes into focus with you. It's just those little details yeah. that mm -hmm. make the magic, you know? It's a really, really wonderfully cinematic sort of video. And the fact that you did it in black and white as well, we don't normally see that in, you know, the synth wave music videos. So it's really, really cool to see that. Yeah, and it, you know, there's, it's funny that because as well, you know, when I was talking to Brad, you know, we had agreed we were going to do two videos, and I said, you know, we're doing this video at Neon Demon Studios, and it's going to be big, it's going to be colourful, and and where do you go after that? You know, you it's mm -hmm. like the only thing after that would have been maybe animation or something claymation i've always wanted to do a stop motion animation type video thing like peter gabriel did and then i thought no let's just do the complete antithesis because the song itself is a very you know somber melancholic type of song it's about missing home and mm -hmm. you know i think I quite like the idea of it being black and white because that immediately evokes that mood. But then I don't know if you're like me, but most of my memories are in black and white. When I think about old memories, I, I have mm. this thing where my memories become black and white. It's kind of, or that kind of, you know, monochrome sort of thing. My, my memories are never in color. Um, and dreams, actually, my dreams are always in black and white. Really? That's really interesting. Um, but yeah, we, we, we sort of, started the idea with that and then I had this idea of like all of these little cutscene things that you see in the video they're symbolic of taking chances 
you know, the, the part where the dice gets rolled, mm -hmm. the thing with the person's mm -hmm. diving into the water from the diving board, all of these little metaphors for taking chances, diving in, you know, just roll the dice and see what happens because you just never know what what life will give you if you just say yes to to, to what's in front of you, you know, and I, I'm very, I kind of live my life like that, you know, it's some sort of very, I like to say yes to things because you never know where it's going to take you. But if you say no, you just sit in the same place. So very, very true. Yeah. Let's go ahead and show this beautiful video for Glasgow Song. <laughs>
Michael, Michael, Michael. Do you know, do you know every Classic. time I watch that music video, I notice things that I didn't see the first or second or third time around. I notice more. So. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of little sort of cut cut things yeah. like i say the taking chances metaphors yeah. and then the clocks Box, the yeah. clocks are are kind of like you know stop wasting time you know what i mean yeah. do what it is that you want to do with your life and your your passions and Correct. you know what i mean it doesn't yeah. last forever you're yeah. only here once as far as you know that's right <laughs> so dane and gene phoenix you hey. you have an album with um power nerd and on the album, you have a song, Mega Wave, which is super, super awesome. It's, it's, you, I remember you saying that you filmed it on the beach in Canada? Yeah, I did. Yeah, in Scarborough, actually, which is east of like downtown Toronto. Um, Toronto has uh, many amazing beaches or beach areas. Uh, so yeah, it was late summer. It was on the beach in Toronto and uh, the director, Philip Vukcevic, uh, who's incredible to work with. I've worked with him in the past. Um, he just had this whole sort of like concept uh, and we really wanted to pay homage to the Karate Kid movies in Cobra Kai. And uh, luckily the weather was just perfect. And we found the coolest little uh, child actors to be a part of the video. So it was just... Um, it's a, a little, fun video. There's a little um, little miniature Dana Jean Phoenix. It's so cute. <laughs> <Yeah>. She <laughs> Michael, was amazing. You find, Michael, you need to find a little boy that, that resembles you next. I yeah. know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Mini <Many> Mike. <laughs> Mini Mike. That's right. <laughs> I always wondered how they can find um, you know, actors to resemble their younger selves um, in movies and things. Like, how do they find the right kids for that? It's really interesting. Yeah. Mm. Well, Phoebe was really Phoebe, the the young gal who played young DJP. She was <laughs> she was so impressive because she was so fearless. Like, and the director is great too. Um, but she just she had so much fun. She wasn't nervous at all. She just was not afraid to be herself. And that's you know we caught the best footage when she was just laughing and being herself. And it was really exciting to watch that as uh, as someone who's performed like my whole life and you know been doing music in some facet or way or another and, and been in front of the camera um, just to see someone just so natural and so relaxed. It was a really, it was a treat to watch and it was very inspiring. It's really cool. Yeah, it was lovely. Yeah. Are you um, going to be working on any more music videos coming up in the future? Any more collaborations? Anything oh. like that? Yeah, absolutely. I'm always working on collaborations and I'm still working on an upcoming EP. Uh, so when that is uh released uh definitely be some some music videos coming down the pike for sure and you will be the first to know electric <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you it's always a treat when we get uh, the music and the videos from you guys so thank you for that oh thank you for for giving us a platform absolutely so i think we can go ahead and show the music video for mega wave and hang out a little bit more how about that sounds great yes. all right
Cobra Kai vibes. Yeah. And some UFOs wanna, at the end, just to keep you guessing. I want to know more about the UFO <laughs> scene. <laughs> yes. Great question, Michael Oakley. Uh, it will actually help me to promote another song of mine. Yes. Um, Only for One Night, which was uh, a song produced by Power Nerd on my Pixel Dust album. Mm. Um, the same director, Vila Philip Vukcevic, he's fantastic. Um, he directed the music video for Only uh, for One Night, and it was set on a spaceship in outer space. We're on um, a planet, and it's sort of a nod to that that video. So we're hoping to do a third video one day to complete the trilogy. Awesome. So is that the pre? That's the prequel. That is the prequel. You are correct, sir. That's the <laughs> message at the end. Yeah. There you go. There you go. And uh, I was really uh, nervous. I remembered dancing on those rocks. Those rocks by this by the beach were very slippery. Um, <laughs> were you barefoot? Were you no, barefoot? I was in uh, good old Doc Martens. So those oh, that's good. Have a great grip. <laughs> Great grip. <laughs> Shows how hardcore you are in your docs, like on the rocks. <laughs> I'm a docs girl through and through. Yeah. <laughs> I still have some pairs from when I was in high school and they're still holding up pretty well. So. Yeah, they're amazing. They last forever. Yeah. I, nothing but so, docs um, when it comes to me. What is up next for both of you? Michael, are you perhaps working on any sort of live stream situation? I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I actually, do you know what? The deposit just got paid yesterday oh, for it. <laughs> Yay! For the, for the venue, there had been a lot of back and forth because just with everything that's been going on, making sure that um, that I'd be able to actually go, no restrictions, but commercial shoots are allowed to, to happen. So so we booked the venue. Brad Canaan is coming over to, uh, to film. And uh, I'm in rehearsals right now with, with my band and uh, got two fabulous girl singers um, to, to come and be a part of that as well. Um, yeah, I'm very excited because uh, I, I was really inspired when I saw Ollie Ride's live stream because that was like next level. Mm, yeah. yeah, The production value in that was just like, you, you know what I mean? That's like... You could put that on any any television station and it would it wouldn't be out of place. It just had such yeah. a high caliber production. So I was like, you know what? I really want to I want to try and do something with that level. Um so yeah, Brad's coming back. Um we're gonna do a, a music video while he's here for Babylon as well, believe it or not. <laughs> with the with with the same girl that was in the Is There Anybody Out There video, Murphy. She's just amazing. She's a sweetheart. So um, I, I really wanted to work with her again. Um, but yeah, so I'm filming this live show in July, July 14th, mm. um, unless I get hit by a bus. So yeah, July 14th. Um, <laughs> and then it hopefully should air on uh, August the 14th, which is a Saturday. I'm funny with numbers. I've got a weird thing with numbers. I know I'm a weirdo, um, but my first album, California, came out on the 6th. Uh, Introspect came out on the 8th, and then the two numbers combined is the 14th, which is yeah. what Odyssey came out on. Um, and that, you know, the 14th for the live stream and then the 14th for the actual airing of it. I know I'm a, I'm a fucking weirdo. I'm wow. not going to, I'm not going to lie. I'm not even going to deny it. I know it's I have, numbers. <laughs> I have the numbers thing going on too in my life. Michael, trust, trust. I won't get into it now, but I do. I do. There's a yeah. cosmic reason for everything. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. And Dana, we were, able, we were, um, it was a treat to see you performing on, you know, the, stream fest uh, synth, uh oh the synth valley yeah yes. yeah it was that was uh, it was so oh, awesome. thank you it was it really was, cool it was so fun to do and it's i think just been really important in these times to keep live stream events happening and going i'm really thankful to people like yourself electrish and um to starfare for providing those platforms for artists because it's really helped to just keep us engaged with everyone um and it creates like a cool little hub for people to get together and chat in lieu of being able to you know hang out at live shows um so it's really important so thank you 
Oh yeah. yeah. Well, I think that you both pour a lot of heart and soul into your music, into what you do. So it's always wonderful to see that. For me, I mean, listening to the albums and, and you know playing the songs and repeat. Yes, that's part of it. But also seeing your performance is just it tops it all off. It's like the cherry. <laughs> that's what we love to do, right, Michael? Like oh, we yeah. we do all this to to perform live. Uh, I mean, I, I can't speak for you, Michael. I know for myself, performing live is just one of life's greatest joys. Um, especially when you're looking out into a crowd and, and people are vibing and they know the, mm. the words to your music. <laughs> there's yeah. no there's no better feeling. Um, it's, it's it's reassuring as well. You're like, ah, oh, they mm. like me. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the party. <laughs> yeah. It's, do you know the funny thing is though the thing I think um that we're very lucky to kind of be the way that music works with the scene and everything is that we know a lot of the people who are at the shows. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like we've we've had interactions with them. I think that's the wonderful thing about the whole scene is that um that the people who are fans get to interact with us and we actually do communicate with them and it's not like some like our, our manager or someone that that's right. been hired to like oh thanks very much it's like it's actually <laughs> us that are like oh yeah. i really appreciate that thank you um and live show live stream events as well are are, are super important right now i think because we we need to to have that entertainment and feel good distraction right now you know i mean i think that's something that we really need and uh, the good thing about the live streams is is that you've got the little chat window so you can talk to people and the music isn't so loud that you're like right. what yeah. what exactly. yeah. yeah oh okay uh, you just have to read really fast <laughs> yeah, you're just, you're just <laughs> you watching the typing. and pick the right emojis right yeah. yes yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Speaking of, you know, live stream, we are actually working on having a Static Realms music festival streaming Ooh. on our channel. What? So, Dana, mm -hmm. I'm going to hit you up after this because I would love, love, love if you have time, if you would be able to be a part of it, we would love uh, to have you. I'd Mike, love to be a part of it. I know you're both busy people, but we'll figure it out if we can. We will. Yes. Let's, let's talk. <laughs> yes, we will. We will. Set That's the, exciting. Set, set the mania. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> yes, I like it. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, uh, absolutely. I think it's funny because I've been looking at doing more of these types of, of events. Um, I just get, do you know what the thing is? See, with live shows, I just get really, really nervous. Do you know that way? Really? I, even, I remember the first, see the first, it's so funny that we're all together here tonight because the first show that I ever did with my own music was with you, Dana, in Ottawa. Was it? That's oh, right. House, House of Targ. House of Targ. That's right. That I was the, remember that, was the that first night. show, and it was like it was like a, it was a sort of practice show for me before going back to Glasgow to okay. play at Outland for the first time with Time yeah. Cop and people. And I remember when like you and me were like talking, and I said yes. It, it was funny because when I said yes, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll I'll do it. And, uh, and I had this immediate, like, oh, my God. What, why did I say yes? What what the hell am I doing? Who do you think you are, Michael? What, what, what are you, why, why are you putting yourself through this? And it was just, it's just the fear, you know, the insecurity mm. talking, you know. The, That's oh God, all it what, is. What if I drop the microphone? What if my voice mm. isn't right? You know, what if? And then you just think, well, what if it goes all right? You know, what if I have a really good time? You know, what if I actually get the chance to be better at being live because I haven't really done this before, Absolutely. you know what I mean? Yeah. So I just remember that. And in my head, I was like, I need to make an excuse. I need to find, <laughs> I need to, I need to find a way you know, out of this. <laughs> I know that conversation. No, I know that all too well. But yeah, you have to go through it to, to, to feel more confident. And I remember when I first started doing live shows as like a synthwave artist, because I have a lot of my past experience with, with, with full bands. So I would, you know, it was just a singer. I had to show up with a microphone and suddenly with Synthwave, you know, I'm, I'm on stage by myself. I'm handling the sound check and the instruments and the laptop and the back and track and the, and the lighting. Um, and so it's very, it can be very stressful. Um, but I booked a few shows at like some coffee shops, some um, yeah. used bookstores, like really low stake shows. 
um, just so that I would have some audience and that there was a certain amount of pressure to sort of get something together. Um, and then I just really kind of learned really quickly, like, okay, don't do that. Don't do that. Let me make sure that I practice this part and make this a lot more smooth. And it really helped me to, to just help make everything more streamlined. Yeah. So. Yes, and there's also, do you know what else is really is really nice as well is that you, I think when we do like those kind of events as well, like see, remember when we did Outland obviously in Toronto mm -hmm. and you've done more shows over in Europe and stuff with Stu yeah. before as well. The, 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 um, the people that turn up for these events, they're so nice, they're so warm and friendly and, and immediately like they make you feel just like really welcome i think that's the other thing because i've done gigs before with a band mm -hmm. and most of the time it's you they don't know you whereas when we're doing these shows you know these are people that have brought along like a vinyl and like can you sign this and i'm like of course geez, what, what? <laughs> of course i'll do it you know but, but then you immediately feel like do you know what I can't not have a good night tonight because like there everybody is like wanting to have a good time. They're so kind. Do you know Absolutely. what I mean? They want they want you to, to have the best night. So it's like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Synthwave shows have been hands down the best experiences in terms of live performances and hanging hanging out. <laughs> it's just it's you're guaranteed a fun, amazing party and an amazing time at a synthwave show because everyone involved the the patrons the, the fans the um music bloggers like everyone the promoters everyone's just so mad cool and so supportive uh, so it's really a unique and special scene i feel i tell you, I tell you what will be quite interesting because when i do this live stream thing next month like the i i was thinking about this i was saying to brad you know you know usually when you're at a show and you play a song and you're like <laughs> and, you, and you're singing and you're playing and you finish the song there's usually applause but when you're doing a live stream it's like <laughs> and <nothing. Yeah. laughs> it's different <laughs> yeah that's why like, when, when i did my synth valley performance it's like yo it's got to be like a dj on to the next song on oh, to the next exactly, song transition exactly. right in like, no gaps no, 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 gaps. no silences really even, even if you're talking there has to be some sort of music in the background to keep that it's like Maybe i always think of it you were like, so on point with your performance you were like, oh thank you, you were, yeah thanks you were doing like everything and i was like go girl get it <laughs> <laughs> it's so much fun it's like yeah once once you get like the flow it's like beep boop, beep it's like you're operating yeah. a spaceship yeah really yeah 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 i can't <laughs> wait to see, i can't wait to see more performances and then you know whenever we're able to go to a live performance i think i'll like tear up during like the sound check or something i will be able I will to too. like I will an too. epic experience you know yeah, it feels, it feels so good when we can perform live again. And you know, I'm I'm optimistic that that day will be here sooner than later. Yeah, yeah. I am too. Yeah. I am. And in the meantime, we can enjoy your wonderful music and live streams and everything else in between because that's what we have for now, and it's just as great. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Don't it's the, the best of it. it's, it's the people that make it great, and so mm. yeah. As long as you're able to connect with people, that's what's most important. Mm -hmm. I agree. Well, I have really enjoyed speaking with both of you and hearing your stories. I don't want to keep you too long, but I absolutely love speaking with both of you anytime I get to. So thank you for taking time out of your nights to speak with me. It's oh. always a pleasure. It was thank so great. Us. Yeah, thank you for having us. It's so great to sit down and chat with you in real time. Like, anytime, yeah. anytime. Yeah. Do you know, just quickly before uh, before you go, I saw a little video of your own video coming up with Mr. Blake Carpenter. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm a robot girl. Oh, <laughs> that was oh so God. cool. That's yeah, so that's coming out in July. We're going to be having a little, you know, music video um, premiere on Static Realm. So I'll be in the music video. So I had a big green screen and I shot myself from all these different angles with Eddie's help, of course. And um, yeah, it's a cover of Mr. Roboto by Stitch. <gasps> that is My epic. I can't wait yeah. to see it. I, I like Blake Carpenter. Do you know what? It's funny because 
uh, Blake's a really cool guy, but he also because I've seen other like videos and things that he's done. He's he he always does really good with like the videos and stuff like that. He's, he's, he's cool, cool guy. Yeah. He told me what his um you know his vision for it was, and I was like, let's do this, yeah, mm. let's go. And then he showed me like the previews for it. Some were just my parts, some were just his parts, and it's just so cool what he does. So cool. Yeah, I'm excited to see that then when it comes Thank out. You. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Well, if you guys watching haven't checked out Dana Jean Phoenix's album Mega Wave with Power Nerd, and if you haven't heard Odyssey yet, what are you waiting for? It's streaming everywhere, and you can visit Bandcamp for both of these amazing albums and just support these amazing artists who I have had the pleasure of speaking with. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Thank you, Electra Sharasta. Thank, yes. Thank you so much. The one who I am.